ladies, gentlemen, and destined ones of all ages, with Black Myth Wukong out for a couple of weeks now, people have experienced a fairly large amount of what the game has to offer. And while you can absolutely push through with pure skill of dodge timing and successful see-throughs, things like that, one of my favorite things in a game like this is builds. The concept of putting the right pieces of equipment and skills together in the right way to make something just totally unique and special. And this game has just a ton of that, and today I want to talk about a few of these builds with you. The five best that I've seen so far, and while in some of these, best will mean unbelievably powerful, strong in all of the best ways, for others, best might mean that I just absolutely love the concept and it completely changes the playstyle and flow of the game when you use it. And for this first entry into sort of this series, I suppose, I also want to focus on things that are at least able to be put together in a basic sense before the end of your first playthrough, things that don't require New Game Plus. Though if you guys do like this and we do more, we'll expand it out further than that, of course. First up then, one of my personal favorites, Golden Armor Set, Spirit Skills, and Staff Spin. I absolutely love the way that this one plays, and the main idea behind this is the Golden Set giving you Chi Regeneration when you crit. Staff Spin is the fastest method of hitting, so if you have Crit Chance, then Staff Spin will crit the fastest. Build Crit Chance, use Staff Spin, regenerate your Spirit Skills as a result just insanely quick, and then use a powerful Spirit Skill along with this. You can do something like Apramana Bat or Crow Diviner for Frost Application for a ton of control over the fight that just makes it really just easy as pie. Or just do something like Wandering White Spirit for just massive pops of damage whenever you use it. But the general combo is just incredibly powerful no matter how you build around it. Not to mention that Chi Regen also applies to Vessels rather than solely Spirits, which means that once you get the Vessel for the end of Chapter 5 as an example, the big tornado creating fan, you can regenerate that insanely quickly as well. And that is another method of massive crowd control that you can stack on top of the others, not to mention just literally using Immobilize as a spell, and then the fact that Staff Spin also generates focus insanely quickly and the build is pretty set around it. Tons of crowd control, you got stuns for bosses, insanely quick Chi regeneration and focus buildup from Staff Spin itself, which can be boosted further by curios like the Amber Prayer Beads. And this just leads to unbelievably comfortable combat where you can just invalidate a lot of the boss's most dangerous attacks by making them literally unable to perform them. Second up, and this one is perhaps a little bit obvious, but the Monkey King armor set with the Monkey King staff. This is sadly only obtainable in Chapter 6 itself, so you'd have to really go out of your way to have any optional content remaining in previous chapters, so you could then use this against them after acquiring it all. And it's worth mentioning that while this does give you a special, like, Wukong stance to have it all equipped together in Chapter 6, where you can, like, properly charge up to four focus points manually, it locks you in Smash Stance, and it's really cool and effective, but this only applies to Chapter 6. You cannot bring this back to previous chapters, it will just put you in a normal stance, but using the armor and weapons, and the same is actually a and the same is actually applicable in New Game Plus, at least up until something happens in New Game Plus 4, but that's a bit far down the line. The point being that this armor set and the weapon, even without the special stance that you get for it in Chapter 6, is actually still really good, because the weapon itself lets you build to four focus points without the meter depreciating at all, because of the actual unique effect that it has, and the actual armor set, what it does is give you crit chance when you use spells, and give you cooldown reduction when you get crits. So it really just extends to give you a ton of ability to actually have spells active, and to build high focus points while you're using your spells too. It's probably the most simple build concept that you could build around because you just build further strength around it to make it stronger, further cooldown reductions, mana cost reductions, or general power for your actual spells too. Then you basically just are the Monkey King. There's not a whole lot to this one past that, aside from just a really strong weapon and armor combo that literally have a five set bonus between them. Next up then we have one of my favorite big smash setups, which is Cloud Step with the upgrades that let you charge heavy attacks to use as Unveiling Strike for the massive damage bonus, as well as the Relic upgrade that lets you charge to four focus points while standing in Ring of Fire, and then just unleashing absolutely insanely big singular hits from the safety of invisibility on a relatively short cooldown. Sure, there are ways to reach higher attacks than this and thus bigger singular hits, and this is just a super fun and specifically safe, comfortable way of achieving massive singular chunks of damage. And who doesn't like looking at massive singular chunks of damage, even if you're doing it from a little safety platform because you're scared of the bosses? It also lets you build up into fun items like the Gourd that increases your next attack's damage, and the most, like, pin point enjoyable version is chapter 4 after you get the golden long staff. Then you can use a setup and pillar stance and have the big hit be emphasized by a massive lightning dragon coming from above. And this gives it the further synergy of letting you just drink your reward from the top of pillar stance due to the skill tree further upgrades too. It just makes my brain tingle when you do it. I love those kinds of bonus synergies to make something work solidly like this. Then our next entry is one of the best two ways to fully dive into melee combat using the honestly fantastic spellbinder 
spell. This is one of the hidden parts of Chapter 3, and it makes you unable to use other spells after you activate it, spirits or vessels as well. It uses all of your mana, whatever your maximum mana is, you cannot cast it without it, and then it will use all of it once you do. It converts all of that mana though directly into an attack buff relative to how much mana it takes, as well as offering you other bonuses like a chunk of crit chance if you upgrade that in the skill tree as well. This just creates a playstyle that says, hey, pick a staff stance, go fight the enemy, dodge their attacks or parry them, that's your only way to deal with it, and hit them with your bashing sticks to do loss of damage. It changes the playstyle of the game entirely, it removes all the spells part of it, and one way of synergizing with this is the centipede armor set that you can craft after the final boss of chapter 4. The main set bonus of this increases your attack by 20% while you're poisoned, and there is a soak for your gourd that you can get that lets you poison yourself when you drink from it. Mix that further with things like the venomous arm guards, which are a super visible item that you can get from breaking four of the back arms of the venom Dowis first encounter in chapter 4, but these add even further crit chance as well as letting you apply poison to enemies too, on top of that just to really drive it home a bit further. Not to mention there's a fun tech with Spellbinder where it snapshots the attack buff, which means that you can do something like use a spirit that gives you bonus maximum mana and curios that give you bonus maximum mana, use Spellbinder, convert your mana to an attack buff, then if you change your spirit and curios to other useful items instead, lowering your maximum mana won't lower the attack buff. Once Spellbinder is applied, you can change freely, which makes it way more stackable of a buff too as well. Then for our final entry, we're taking Spellbinder again, but in a different way. The previous build was focused around just sort of improving all damage you do across the board while you're in Spellbinder for a real fighting mode build, but this next one has one singular purpose, and it is singular massive chunks of damage. This has the highest damage scaling potential as you push the new game plus and beyond, as well as generally speaking, it's just using the sprint armor set, the very first craftable armor set that you can find in the game, upgrading it at the blacksmith completely, and this gives you a stacking attack buff while you sprint, which is multiplicative and very hefty as well, meaning if you apply all the spellbinder stuff from the last section, you get a big attack number, and because the sprint bonus is a massive multiplier, it scales even better with spellbinder than it does without. We then pair that further with smash stance, which lets you charge heavies while sprinting, and if you upgrade the armor to mythical, it also gives you free focus charge while sprinting, which also stacks further to make your heavies charge faster while you're sprinting as well. As a full combo, this creates just absolutely nasty heavy attacks with quite some frequency too, and it's just a combo that gets even better as you get more further from the game, and more pieces that you can actually add to it, and whether it again be something like the Amber Prayer Beads from Chapter 5 for more focused gain, and it obviously scales incredibly well with higher attack bonuses too, or crit bonuses from later game staff weapon unlocks. But a fun one that you can pair this with in Chapter 5 specifically is the Staff of Blazing Karma. This creates a burst of fire effect on Smash Dance heavies that cost three or more focus points, which just adds that extra bit of extra this sort of panache to the setup at that stage of the game. That's just about it for today then everyone, five really cool and fun builds that are either extremely powerful, very special and unique playstyles, or of course a mix of the two ideally. Whether you're looking to make your journey to the west a little bit more comfortable, a bit easier, or just looking for a different playstyle than the one that you've been using so far. I hope you've all enjoyed this then, and let us know if you want more like this video in the future. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye